Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. It's uh, Sunday morning, we are about to go to church, but I wanted to show you the final fix of this old Arian's mower. Hope you enjoy it. So previously, we talked about all the issues that this uh, cool old mower had, and the final things it seemed we needed were to um, make a new wire to kill the ignition coil when we are ready to turn off the mower. So we found a wire from Grandpa's wire collection. And we joined it here. Remember, this is snapped on to the ignition coil. The ignition coil is the horseshoe looking device here. And there's a magnet on the flywheel. And when you crank the engine, <clears throat> you turn the flywheel and the blade and everything in the engine. And this magnet comes around uh, very close to this ignition coil. And uh, the magnetic field induces. It makes electricity with the ignition coil <clears throat> and it's really high voltage and it gets sent through the spark plug wire here to the spark plug and that is all in time with uh, the, the cycles of the engine intake compression power and exhaust so the power stroke is when the piston is, is coming it's coming forward squeezing the air and gas in the combustion chamber which is right below this and right before the piston gets all the way up the spark comes to the the electricity comes to the spark plug and it sparks and it ignites that compressed air and gas that explosion is the power stroke and the piston is forced back down into the engine and that's what that's what makes an engine run and when we are ready to turn it off, we can make the engine stop running by grounding out that electricity to the frame so the electricity doesn't flow to the spark plug anymore. It just gets dissipated and wasted in the frame so the engine dies. So we use some shrink wrap here. Uh, I love this stuff. It makes a good, good tight seal on wires that you've twisted or soldered together just use a lighter or uh, maybe a soldering pin or a little uh, heat gun to shrink it so we ran our wire here comes up here <clears throat> I had to splice another one here because this green one was too short and we created a little plate out of a sheet of plastic and as you saw we measured for this uh, this button the switch comes off of a weed eater that we jumped and it's nice because it stays in the the closed position or the on position so to kill the engine you hold it down the engine dies and when you let go you don't have to remember to put it back in the on position so our wire comes up under there <clears throat> to one of these poles and the other pole is a small wire that simply goes under this screw here and is grounded so when we do this we make these two spades touch each other on the inside <clears throat> oh I said that all wrong sorry so that means here it's actually in the open position yeah sorry about that 
So when we want the engine to run, we do not want this wire to be uh, connected to the ground. So right now this is the open position. Sorry about that. This would close the switch, make the connection between this wire and this wire, which is grounded, and that will kill, kill the engine. So we did that. Awesome. It, it works. Then we had the problem with the drive system. If you remember, this bar is connected to a lever. <clears throat> and it moves this wheel, which is a drive wheel, one way or another. See? Moves it closer to the center of that big silver disc or further from the center. So if you want to drive slowly, you bring this drive rubber wheel closer to the center. If you want to drive fast, you bring it out to the outer edge. This was not holding, so I tightened this nut, give a little more uh, friction, and now the, the lever tends to stay where you want it. It kept jiggling out to the fast position after a minute or two. So there's a, a pulley tensioner belt down here and it was it was stuck in the uh, non-tensioning position and I had to spray it with some lubricant and uh, tap it and it, it came over where it should be so let's look at that <clears throat> take the spark plug wire off just for safety to make sure there's no way this thing starts on us uh, so here here is that pulley there might have to back up a little bit Tim so its bar was frozen back here even with this little spring on it but I just had to spray it and tap it and I actually had to take this plastic donut shroud off but it was pretty easy it just had three little screws I loosened the bolt at this pivot point and sprayed this arm and tapped on this bar this way a little bit so that it could uh, put some tension on this belt and it seems to work so I'm pretty excited uh, this thing I had a lot of issues. I had it for months, working on one thing at a time as, as I was able. But I'm really glad I'll be able to give it back to my friend and uh, hopefully he can enjoy it for a while. Don't always come across um, well-built old things like this. But it, it's in good shape somehow. It was either really well taken care of or it was lightly used or a combination of the two. But, you know, it's caster wheels. It's pretty cool. It makes it really easy to pivot side to side when you're using it. And look at this paint job. I mean, it's, it's still all there. It just doesn't happen with your, your basic push mower that you would buy today. One, one little problem is uh, the compression is still low and it, it just won't start on its own and the simple carburetor uh, doesn't have a primer bulb or a choke or anything so it does require a couple of squirts of uh, starting fluid.
Yeah, I wanted to mention the boat. Um, we have this uh, small boat gear that fits in the back of the truck, and I took the boys out into in, in a lake near our house. We didn't have a whole lot of time before dark, um, and we didn't catch anything or get any bites. So the water is, is cool right now. Um, but we met a guy who had been fishing, he said all day, and he caught uh, 10 sakale, or which are crappie. And he asked if we wanted them. So he pulled his boat over close to us and gave them to us. And uh, that was really nice. It's not the first time uh, that we've been fishing and someone gave us fish. And uh, one of the boys said, wow, fishermen are generous. So thanks to that guy, uh, he may never see these videos, but we really appreciate it. And uh, those of you that are generous, keep it up. You made the day for our dad and his three sons uh, giving, giving us those fish. So take care.